when it comes to the question of position most of us refer to google earth or google map some of us may also know that our position on google earth depends on a bunch of satellites that are orbiting around the earth but how much do you know about these satellites aren't you curious about the satellites do you know how they tell our position today i'll tell you about gps satellites in the simplest possible way let's start shall we there are a number of satellites orbiting the earth which gives us the position america was the first to put up these satellites and they call them gps which stands for global positioning system but then russia china europe all started their own positioning system by launching their own set of satellites Though all these satellites are known by their own set of names they all work on same basic mathematical principles or concepts the first concept is trilateration which literally means position from three distances for this method you need to know the location of the orbiting satellites and then measure the distance from your location to those satellites The second concept is relation between speed and time taken for the GPS signal to travel which gives us distance. In simple math we know distance equals speed multiplied by time. Let's discuss these concepts and variables one by one. For the first concept of trilateration to work we need to know the accurate position and the location of the satellites in the orbit. All GPS satellites transmit information about their position, current and predicted and health via something is known as ephemeris data. An information about time and state of the entire satellite constellation is also known as almanac. As for the second concept, we know the speed of radio signal which is almost equal to speed of light and here time is the biggest variable. because with just 1 second of mistiming the position can be almost on the moon instead of earth so we need very precise time every satellite is equipped with an atomic clock these clocks have an atom of quartz crystal and various other atoms for greater stability the frequency of quartz oscillation is measured precisely to keep accurate time But as the satellites are in orbit in microgravity the atoms oscillation does change ever so slightly or about 1 nanosecond after 4 days so even the atomic clock need update which is periodically sent from ground control stations twice a day atomic clocks are big and very expensive and our gps receivers are small and cheap So the question is how we can make sure that the time is well synchronized and precise in our GPS receivers Every time a GPS receiver is receiving a signal they start synchronizing the clock This enables us to determine the time within 100 billionth of a second without the cost of having an atomic clock in our receiver So if you have a cell phone with a built-in GPS receiver Your time in your cell phone will be very precise when you are using your built-in GPS. There are four types of GPS signal designed for civilian use. They are called L1CA, also known as legacy signal transmitted by all satellites, and L2C, L5 and L1C, also known as modernized signal which are transmitted by newer satellites. There are also restricted signals encrypted for authorized parties only depending on your receiver and authorization code you can use this signal l1ca signal however is free for all to use all the satellites transmit various types of signal or data via different carrier frequencies l1 signal carrier frequency is 1575 decimal 42 megahertz and l2 signal carrier frequency is 1227 decimal 60 megahertz the data signal is encoded into these frequencies and they are known as pseudo random code or prc it is a complicated sequence of on and off pulses 
the signal data looks like a random electrical noise hence the name pseudo random each satellite generate their own pseudo random code and they are different from each other so all the satellites can use the same carrier frequency without jamming each other the complexity of pseudo random code is designed in such a way that with each reception of signal it amplifies the signal and boost the reception and that's the reason we do not need such big satellite antenna dishes let's see what we know so far first we need to know the location of each and every satellite secondly we need to measure the distances to the satellites visible to the receiver thirdly we need to have a very precise time and signal speed to measure the distance there are of course many variables which can render this gps position bad the biggest errors can occur due to atmospheric delays as a gps signal passes through the charged particles of the ionosphere and then through the water vapor in the troposphere it gets slowed down a bit and this creates an error in distance measurement by atmospheric modeling we can eliminate most of this error satellites are continuously sending updates on this ionospheric model receivers turned on after several days being off or moved 1000 km from the previous location will use the outdated fmris and this can cause a poor position data but within few minutes as the almanac is updated via the gps signal your position accuracy will increase another big error can happen due to multipath gps signal bouncing back from any reflective surface nearby which will cause time delay and hence poor position we need a minimum of four satellites to calculate a position solution the more signal or more satellite a receiver can see the more precise it can be if the satellites are spread across the visible sky rather than clumped together we can achieve a good position this is known as satellite geometry satellites very close to the horizon can also cause bad position data also there can be a clock synchronization error but is quickly corrected with the consequent reception of signal so sometimes you may see a sudden position jump for a few second solar flare or commonly known as coronal mass ejection can cause severe disruption to the gps signal ground based stations are keeping a constant watch on the sun and the solar weather gps technology has evolved over the years and today we are very much dependent on this technology from cell phones and watches to farming equipment shipping and containers to atms we use gps in almost everywhere this includes navigation land sea and air navigation large scale farming onshore and offshore construction projects mining logistical supply chain management banking system and power grids though sometimes we may not realize it but we use this gps technology in every step of our modern life of course there are much more to gps positioning other than what i discussed here but hey we all need to start somewhere right if you feel that this video added some value to you please give it a thumbs up and that's all for i have you for today may we meet again